Hey everybody, I'm Rohan. Today we are joined with Victoria. Hi guys. To learn about client invoicing at FinSuite, we use four applications to do it. Airtable, Zapier, Google Drive, and Google Docs. So let's get to it. That's it for sweet. So this is the Airtable base. So in this base, you would start off with the start here table. Uh, you will find a written explanation of the workflow. We have also put in links for you to clone. So you can clone the Google Drive, Zapier, uh, Flow, and this Airtable base. The last three tables of the base is to do with billable. So we will not go over them today. Okay, so let's start off with, uh, with today's topic. In invoice payment methods, we have stored information about um, the various payment methods that we have at FinSuite um, for our clients. So it's a very simple table here. In the clients table, we've got details about the clients. We've got a linked record to the invoice payment methods. So we know what the pay preferred payment method is for that client. And then another link record to invoicing. So those were two very simple tables. Uh, and now on to this big one. So in invoices, we will find all information about every invoice. So on the left, we've got some colors as a quick visual reference. So red is invoice not sent, yellow is sent, and green is paid. We've got um, a generic invoice ID, so that is the name of the client and a date. And then we've got two check boxes. So one is to indicate that the invoice has been sent, another that invoice has been paid. We could have had a single select, but we went for two because here we've got a date paid field. So that is an auto-generated field, which will update upon clicking this checkbox. So as you can see, I click this, okay, there, it worked. So continuing, we've got the linked record to clients, services, date created, date when the record was created, date paid field, which we just went over, the class or type of project, the amount, and then we move on to the payment type. So this is this is a very cool set. Um, and that is because when you select a field, the message here changes accordingly. So, so we've got single payment here. As you can see, it's a formula field. We've not written it manually. It's It's generated. So it says, this invoice represents the full payment for all the services. When the first 50% is selected, the message is this invoice is the first 50% for this project. The second 50% will be due upon completion of the project. And if you'd like a custom message, we select the custom option and type in whatever message we want. That will then be reflected there. We've now got the generate invoice button, which I mentioned earlier. We'll go over that when we get to the Zapier bit of the um, bit of the session okay do url links um, and then lookup field to bring in data about the preferred payment method and then formula fields so this is an invoice file name um, very generic we've got a date in here you can have anything as you like invoice number is date and time and then today's date is to add that date inside of the invoice and then the client name so this is the entire Airtable setup we will now move on to Google Drive. So in here, in the parent uh, folder, we've got the invoice template. A very simple, clean, to the point invoice template. Um, anything inside of the squiggly brackets are variables. So these would be the data points that Zapier collects from Airtable and then inputs in here, okay? And then we've got the folders. So uh, inside of every folder, you will find invoices related to that company. So uh, this is another example company with invoices related to that company. All right, so in Zapier, um, we are going to set the trigger by catching a webhook. So. Uh, <laughs> and before, yes, before we move forward, let's just explain about webhook. Uh, is webhook available for all plans 
or do you have to pay a plan on Zapier to share a little bit more for people that are not that familiar as with Zapier Rogan? Can you explain a little bit? Yes. Um, Webhook is available on the premium plan. So I don't think it, it is possible to access it on a free plan or a basic plan. We would need a premium account to get this. And um, basically, you can think of Webhook like making a phone call, like Airtable gives a call to Zapier yeah. and send in a piece of information. And we do that by giving them the phone number. So that is essentially the webhook URL, which we copy mm -hmm. and back over to Airtable. And then we've got this button field. We are simply pasting that URL in here and we are going to send in the record ID. So that is the only piece of information that we will send. So when I click onto this button, there, the webhook is sent. That's the webhook URL. And this is the record ID. So you can see BTQ and that, oh, there, the automation worked and we, we have some URLs there. Um, so that is the record that we are referring to. We can okay. close this, we don't really need that. Um, okay, so we clicked onto that button. Um, the webhook got sent, Zapier got it, great. And now it's moving on to step number two. And that is to find the record in Airtable. We're going to use the record ID to find that record. We do that so we can pull in all related information about that record into Zapier. That is the purpose of step two. Mm -hmm. Step three is find a folder with the name of the company. So as you can see, we've brought in the name of the company from Airtable. And if that folder does not exist, Zapier will create one in Google Drive. So in when I click this, okay, I think Apex consulting exists. So a new folder was not created, but we will try that at the end. So it will look for it. And because it exists, it will then create a new invoice. If not, then it would create a new folder. That is step number three. Step number four is to format the numbers to make it more human readable. So, th so this is 150,000, but it's much easier to read it with a comma. So we are using the formatter step to make it human friendly or readable friendly. Step five is to create the invoice. Now mm -hmm. we are going to add the invoice template URL, which you can find here at the top. They would copy that and paste it in here. And then we now have all of those fields inside of the squiggly brackets listed down here. And we are simply filling those in using information that we got from Airtable. And in Zapier, you can you can access any information from the previous steps. And that is how we are able to locate the URL of the folder. So yeah. in step three, the folder was created and we are able to bring that in. This is the ID of that folder, which is put in there. And then the final step would be to add the URL links back into the record. So we've got the record ID from step one. So we use that to find the record. And then we insert in two URLs. One is um, a direct link to edit the doc if required. And another is to download it as a PDF. So this is the entire workflow and we can see that in action now. So as you can see, we've got two folders. Let's, let's use, so that was Apex and Birdie Bop. So let's go with Carbon Cars. And I am going to click on this button. So the workflow is now triggered. Zapier is working the background. It's looking for that folder will not find it, so it will create one. It will then take in all the information and then create the invoice. As you can see, we've got them here. Yes. So let's open that up. 
and there we have it yeah we can do another test let's go mm -hmm. with um call me and that should also work <laughs> just making sure that the zap was on yeah <laughs> there's a link and there's any voice numbers perfect okay so that is it Thank you everybody for joining the session. I hope you found it useful. Please like and subscribe to our channel. That will help us a lot. If you have any questions, drop a comment and we will reply to you. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at the next session where we speak about Billable. Thank you guys for joining. See you at the next one. Bye-bye.